Yes, this happens every time. One party wins the White House. It usually loses seats in Congress in the next election. But, oh my God, look at this. Democrats have opened a 16-point lead over Republicans in the new poll when it comes to who you want to control the Congress. Overall, Democrats have a 10-point lead when it comes to enthusiasm compared to the Republican base. The question is, what does that mean here on the Sun Coast, where a Democrat winning a congressional seat hasn't happened since... since... I don't know when. On the other hand, Democrats, a Democrat Margaret Good just beat Republican James Buchanan, son of Vern, in the House 72 special election, a sign of things to come or not so much. Joining us for more is Republican, former Republican Congressman Dan Miller, former Democratic congressional candidate Keith Fitzgerald, and Zach Anderson, the political editor for the Herald Tribune. I think I set that up pretty well. Um, you know, the the generic poll has ebbed and flowed. It's uh, 16 points now. Uh, it was down to six points a month ago after the Republicans in Congress passed uh, tax reform. Congressman, when you see a 16-point generic lead across the country in, in, in favor of the Democrats, what does that say to a former Republican member of Congress? It means a wave is coming, <laughs> <laughs> but we still have quite a few months to go. So, uh, you know, it's ebb and flow, as you say. So, but it, it looks like a wave right now. Well, let me ask you the question that I started off with. If a wave is coming, can that really impact the congressional seat that you used to hold, which, you know, Manatee County is about as red as red could be, we, but we just saw a Democrat can win in Sarasota County, and, you know, 30 percent of that district is now Hillsborough County. Right. Well, you have to look at the breakdown, and Manatee County is fairly red. The Sarasota part is the most Democratic part of Sarasota, I think. and so. That's where that Buchanan race was held. And Southern Hillsborough County, which I used to represent, Sun City and such, is hardcore Republican, too. So it's going to be a challenge for a Democrat. But in a wave election, a lot of things can happen. Keith, I know you studied these numbers probably night and day. You probably have them laid out you know, next to your bed at night. <laughs> well, I don't need to lay them out in my bed, but I do have them in my head. The average swing in the state legislative races we're seeing over the last few months is 11 points, which is dead where the good race was. Some of that has to do with the national mood it actually improves your recruitment. You get better candidates in there. So it's not like the candidate didn't, doesn't deserve some of the credit for that. But across the country, it's about an 11-point swing. If you look at that 16th congressional district, as it's now constituted, it is somewhere, but I, I uh, in a similar district, it's lost by 7.3. Uh, Trump won this district by, I think, 10.5 or something like that. That's within the 11-point swing. So if trends were to hold up as they are now, that looks like a competitive seat. And I can guarantee you that the DCCC and others are sniffing around. Well, th Zach, that is the question I was going to ask you. What is the state of play in the floor of the 16th congressional district? There's no doubt that it's a uh, competitive race this time around. You have a candidate on the Democratic side, David Shapiro, who's a credible candidate, who raised more money than Vern Buchanan uh, in the last quarter of 2017. So he kind of put out a statement there that he's going to be able to raise some money and give him a tough race. As uh, Keith said, this is a district that is, uh, you know, it, it is a strongly conservative district. It's a district that went for Trump by 11 percentage points. But as he said, the swing in the good legislative race that we saw in northern Sarasota County, where the Democrat Margaret B Good beat uh, Republican James Buchanan, was an 11 to 12 point swing. So if if you had a similar swing in this congressional seat, you know, it would definitely would be in play. We have one more minute here, but I want to put it this way. Um, politics has its own kind of uh, uh, bookies, so to speak, in terms of uh, rating the races. And uh, in politics, it's called the Cook Report. Uh, and they put out lists. And they move the 16th from uh, strong Republican, likely Republican, uh, uh, to something a little bit less than that. What does that really kind of mean in the big picture? It means that Buchanan got a credible candidate, basically. I mean, without a credible candidate, this district is solidly Republican. 
But with a credible candidate, you know, in the past, Christine Jennings in 2006 came within a few hundred votes of winning this seat. Now, that's not necessarily great news for Democrats because that was a great year for them in 2006, and they still couldn't win the seats. And, uh, you know, they would need, uh, it, it shows that they need a really great year to be uh, strong in that race. Okay, we are just getting warmed up. We'll have much more on the blue wave right after we check the first alert weather. We are talking about the possible blue wave this fall. And joining us is former Republican Congressman Dan Miller, former Democratic congressional candidate Keith Fitzgerald, and Zach Anderson, the politics editor for the Herald Tribune. We talked about one congressional race. Let's talk about the other, the Florida 17th Congressional District, now represented by Tom Rooney, who really, it's almost like, you know, Tom, we, we've hardly got to know ye. Uh, because this is a district that really kind of started out on one side of the state and through constant redistricting, now it represents uh, Sarasota County, uh, south of Clark Road. Uh, after 10 years in Congress, he has had enough, and we're going to have one doozy of a Republican primary, Congressman. Sounds like it. Uh, it's a huge district geographically, which makes it very difficult to run in a, a district like that. There's more than one media market. Gets into the Fort Myers media market, of course, the Sarasota Tampa media market, and then the middle of the state. There's a lot of agricultural rural areas there, but a lot of voters out there, very conservative. I, I would think that's a fairly safe Republican seat, more safe than Vern Buchanan's re-election. I believe that uh, President Trump won that district by a whopping 27 points. Zach, what does that say to you? It says that this is a huge uphill climb for Democrats. And in the past, they haven't really had a competitive candidate in this seat. In this climate, will somebody jump in? It's, it's hard to say, but you know, this is kind of the definition of Trump country. Trump has done very well here. It's uh, mostly suburban and rural areas where the president polls very well. Uh, you've seen some very conservative candidates express interest, and Greg Stubbe, the state senator from Sarasota, has already declared that he's running for the seat. He's running on a conservative platform. He sh out of the gate, he was talking about his support for, you know, uh, protecting, uh, you know, uh, abortion issues for, for being uh, able to roll back uh, the ability to get an abortion, his support for gun rights, his uh, opposition to illegal immigrants, and he uh, talked about supporting President Trump's agenda. So he certainly thinks that the, tr uh, the president is well regarded in this seat. Well, Keith, I'm, I'm interested in what you would think about this because, you know, after that terrible tragedy in Parkland where 14 uh, kids and three members of the faculty were basically massacred, there's been a lot of pushback on the NRA, NRA and specifically members of Congress taking money from them. So now you have a candidate who uh, is the first to tell you he is the poster boy for gun rights in Florida. And do you see that having any kind of adverse impact on him in this congressional race? Well, I think it could. I mean, first of all, nationally, this is a really cool thing that's happening just because, you know, you have this special interest group that since 1994 has really frightened any elected officials from taking him on at the state or national level. And here a bunch of teenagers decided to go right at him, and suddenly the climate feels very different. So I think even within a Republican primary, being solely identified with the most extreme aspect of their agenda could be a problem, because there are some more moderate uh, candidates in that primary race that might might make that an issue. And Congressman, let me just uh, bring this up. Uh, you have a uh, member of Congress, newly elected former military uh, officer who lost both legs in the Middle East, uh, Brian Mass from West Palm Beach. He announced last week that he is for banning assault weapons. If someone who, with that kind of resume, who is as conservative as he is, will go that far, is the presumption that uh, people in, in Florida, in, in terms of uh, voting for or against somebody because of their stance on the, uh, assault weapons, basically, you know, up in the air? Well, for this race, first of all, I think the issue is going to not be as high a level of interest, you know, six months from today. I know it's, you know, it's still very current. Other thing is, the Republican primary is where he's running, Stoopy is running. And so that's a, a positive issue for him to run on the gun issue in a Republican primary. You're, it would be a difficult issue in the November election, but it's unlikely that's going to be the r real race. You've got to win the primary before you even go to the November election. And uh, right now, there's no indication there's going to be a strong Democrat running in that race. So. 
Well, let's ask about the, uh, the uh, Republican primary because it is well known that Julio Gonzalez, the state representative from down south, is going to be running. If that is the race, and there may be other Republicans who jump into it, we'll see. But how does that play out, Zach? Well, they're both very conservative, and the congressman brings up a good point. The real race here is probably in the Republican primary. It's unlikely that Democrats are going to invest a ton of money in this race. So whoever wins the Republican primary is the odds-on favorite to win this seat. And so you have uh, them going as far to the right as they can to try and win that primary. Stubbe is very conservative. He's been maybe the most outspoken person in the state on gun rights issues, uh, at least in the Florida legislature. And then you have Julio Gonzalez, who is also very, very uh, conservative and has sponsors uh, a number of conservative um, you know, bills re regarding uh, freedom of religion and other things like that. So you're really going to have two extremely conservative people kind of fighting for that territory on the right. Keith, <clears throat> let me ask you this, because uh, when people have been wondering why Tom Rooney is leaving after 10 years in Congress, and some people have openly speculated because we're talking abl about the blue wave. If the Democrats take over Congress, it's not going to be a lot of fun if you're a Republican member of it. Yeah, that's right. And I think that one of the things that uh, we're dealing with nationally is being a member of the House of Representatives is no longer a fun job. When uh, Congressman Miller had it, you could be, uh, a, you could work across the aisle with people. There's a lot of reasonableness. Committees and subcommittees actually did a lot of the work on the bills. That has all broken down. And so it's not a fun job up there. People feel like they're just sitting there watching the party leaders fight. And that's a motivation. Uh, being in the minority in that climate, uh, I've been in that situation, is not a lot of fun. It's like catching spears all day because you're not really moving anything along uh, and you're catching flack all the time. Congressman, let me ask you this. Uh, we, we've talked about the 17th now, overwhelming re Republican. We're talking about Vern Buchanan may well have a real race on, on his hand. If you took a look at the entire Tampa Bay area, you have Gus Bilirakis up in, in uh, northern Pinellas County. Uh, you have uh, Dennis Ross in Polk County. When you look at what the possible wave are, are, could those also turn into competitive races? A lot of them could be competitive. The key is getting a, you know, a, a, a real candidate that can raise real serious money. I mean, we're talking about millions of dollars in a race. And so, I mean, uh, Vern Buchanan spent $7 million to get elected in 2006 of his own money. I mean, we don't know of us, another person of our Vern Buchanan's capacity. Or down in the Fort Myers district, we have uh, Francis Rooney, who is capable of spending that kind of money and, and winning a race. So we're only talking about two candidates right now from Sarasota County, but Sarasota County thinks only about a third of the district, something like that. Right. One other area I wanted to get, uh, get into is with these major you know, decisions in terms of Tom Rooney, uh, it causes a lot of dominoes to fall, including who will now run as a Republican in House 72, who is going to run uh, in uh, uh, Julio Gonzalez's uh, state representative race should he run for Congress. Zach, what do you know? Yeah, so as soon as uh, Stubbe uh, announces that he's going to leave that state Senate seat, then you have a really high-profile state Senate seat that's going to attract a lot of interest. And a lot of that interest is going to come from sitting lawmakers. State House members want to move up to the Senate. And so you've got a number of state House members, including State Representative Joe Gruters, uh, you know, Julio Gonzalez, if he doesn't run for Congress, could potentially run for this seat, and others who might be interested in this. Uh, so, you know, all those seats open open up as well. So you've got not just uh, Stubbe's seat, but then the state house seat. So you could have two, three, four uh, seats open up potentially. And you can see the whole legislative delegation be completely reshaped by uh, this action, which is uh, significant. That's why it's so significant when somebody, Congress is sort of the top of the pecking order in terms of, you know, local uh, elected offices. And when that person leaves, everybody else starts to try and move up. We paid a whole lot of attention to House 72 uh, in the last few weeks. Ray Pilon will break a little bit of news, uh, says that he intends to file paperwork today, I believe, to run for what is his old seat. Uh, Republicans have been saying that Margaret Good shouldn't get too comfortable there. That's a nine-month temp gig. Uh, is that a given, Keith? Uh, that what? That he's... That, that it's a temp gig. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. When I uh, was elected in a similar seat, and I went to Tallahassee, a Republican who I did not know was in a leadership walked up to me and said, don't get used to that seat. It belongs to us. <laughs> and, and I told him I thought the seats actually belonged to the voters in the district, not to one of the political parties. And, and I beat him. I won re-election. When you're an incumbent, you have a platform. And frankly, you have an ability to raise a little money. 
So anybody who thinks that Margaret Good is going to be some kind of a pushover, uh, you know, they, they better look again because she's an incumbent now. She's getting a lot of press. She's doing a great job. She's going to raise some money. She is no pushover. Okay, we have to take a short break and we'll be back for final thoughts in a moment. And our guests join us right now for final thoughts. And Congressman, I, your final take, we, we've been talking about a lot of the congressional races, but when you look at what's happening there down to the state Senate and state House races, how volatile do you think the electorate is right now on the Sun Coast? Well, people are energized on the Democratic side. They, you know, Trump is just energizing the opposition. That's what happens in a wave election, the 94 wave, the 2006 wave, the 2000. Uh, 10 way we're just the uh, uh, people out of power say we want it back and so right now there's an indication that the people out of power the democrats right now want are energized to turn out and vote and the republicans are demoralized to some extent so what suggestion or advice would you give to your party got to work hard just you know raise the money and recruit good candidates we get a lot of people retiring which opening seats are easier for the democrats to win but are Sarasota or Suncoast Republicans kind of out of step with what they're seeing nationally? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, this area is, you know, older re Republicans, there are white Republicans that have retired down this area. It's a cross section of the country from the Midwest to the Northeast. And so it's not like it's a large local population here in Manatee or Sarasota counties. And, so I think it's a good cross-section, but it's an older cross-section, which is a different, you know, that demographic. And because of that, Keith, what, how does that change the, the state of play? Well, uh, older folks uh, tend to be conservative in an older sense. Uh, uh, they're more, um, a, a little more moderate. They're for, you know, not big government, not a whole lot of change. Uh, when you're looking at what's going on with Trump, I think he's really alienating a lot of traditional Republicans because he doesn't pay attention to basic social norms. He doesn't respect human beings as, as equals. And I think this is really offensive to a lot of older people. And one of the things you're seeing is that not only are Republicans demoralized, but there is a significant number of people who no, want, no longer want to identify as Republicans. So when you see that high level of support among Republicans, it's overlooking the fact some people are leaving the party and saying that they're NPAs now. So you know, Zach, what you have often heard over the last two years around here is this is Trump country. Is it not so much anymore? I think the jury's still out on that. Obviously, the special election for the state House race, um, you know, Democrats are pretty fired up about that because it was a district that Trump carried by almost five percentage points. But it's still a, kind of a low turnout election. When you get to the general election, do the, you know, loyal Republican voters come out en masse and uh, keep some of these Republican candidates in office? Uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. And we'll have to leave it there, or at least until next time. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of you had to say about last night's show on Planned and Parenthood allowing minors to undergo hormone therapy. The minors must have permission from their parents to go and ha have additional counseling, but some feel that kids shouldn't be allowed to make such a big decision at such a young age. So we went to Facebook to share and hear what you have to say. John says, quote, we are being told that anyone under 18 should not be able to own a semi-automatic rifle, but yet we should believe that someone even younger is capable of making a decision to alter their body. Yeah, that seems logical. But Vanessa says, wow, read the comments here, and anyone wonder why suicide rates are so high amongst the trans community? You are all disgusting adult bullies. Do your research. Did anyone actually watch the segment before spewing hate? Has anyone done their research on the science? Well, if you'd like to join the conversation about tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7. And FYI, you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And for the latest on local breaking news, don't forget to download the updated version of our app. If your current app doesn't work, it's expired. Just go to the App Store and re-download it by searching for WWSB or My Sun Coast. We want to thank all our guests for being here tonight. Former Republican Congressman Dan Miller, former Democratic Congressional Candidate Keith Fitzgerald, and Zach Anderson, political editor for the Herald Tribune.